Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where this is one of the hardest episodes for me to record so let's get going I apologize starting out like this but I know it doesn't get any easier I realize I'm kind of rushing through, but um, as you can see, or every main mission that goes on, things gradually get worse. for a drell named Thane Krios? Well, we have a drell, but not under that name. He was injured, stab wound. He's a regular patient here. It's all right, it's all right. I see. The doctors were able to repair a lot of the trauma. However, Mr. Krios is in the final stages of Keppel's syndrome. At its worst, Keppel's syndrome interferes with his blood's ability to carry oxygen, and he lost a lot. Now, they've given him transfusions, but frankly, there was a very limited supply of Drell blood on the Citadel. I'll get more. Give me his blood type. That's not going to work. Only one other Drell on the station is a match, and that Drell is in with him now. We did all we could to help him through surgery, but his body can't replace lost blood with new cells. Too much shock. His son, Koliat, he's in there saying his goodbyes. You might want to say yours. Commander Shepard, my father mentioned you were no longer incarcerated. I don't know if you remember me. I'm Koliak Krios. I came to donate blood and, well, he asked me to take off his oxygen mask so he could be comfortable. I don't think it will be very long. I realize I've seen this several times and I know what's coming, but it just never gets any easier. Your father helped me save a lot of lives. I'd like to be here. Of course. See ya. I'm afraid I've picked a bad time to leave. Have. You couldn't disappoint me, Thane. Not even now. Such pleasant things from your lips. <coughs> Excuse me. Breathing is difficult. See ya. It will be soon. I need to know if the council has survived. Yes, father. Three are alive thanks to you and Shepard. Udina, he instigated it. He is dead. There is something I must do before it gets worse. I must... of the infinite spirit. This one to where the traveler never tires. A 
lover never leaves. The hungry never starve. Guide this one, Kalahira, and she will be a companion to you as she was to me. so hard the first time was I thought I could save him because usually in games you can right but you could not and I think I remember hearing that the original idea was to be able to save him to be able to go out and like get blood or whatever, a cure for Keppel syndrome, you know? But I think due to time constraints that was removed, I'm not sure exactly why, but I remember when I heard that I wasn't upset necessarily. I wasn't. Sometimes in games or literature or whatever, you need to use that. It can be a, how do I say it? It's a, um, a conduit in order to learn how to deal with things that you cannot change. <laughs> and sometimes despite your best efforts, <laughs> loved ones, Loved ones and the ones who deserve another chance don't always get it. <laughs> and in the years since I've played this, I, the first time I have become more acquainted with grief than I wished to be. <laughs> so I think that's part of the reason I still feel this so deeply. It's not quite as bad as when I first did it. Oh, I sobbed. I sobbed for like three minutes straight. I ended up feeling bad about it because I ended up leaving it in the original. Uh, maybe if I remember, I can link it despite it being one that I am fairly embarrassed about, but... Um... I left the- I just left me in there crying because to me it was like I was sharing this very personal experience, you know? And like, I realized people were like, oh, you love Thane because he's hot. Like, people don't necessarily say that, but like, I'm sure that's like the thought in most people. Yes, he's very attractive and not can't deny that, but there was just something about him that was so- I admired his like how do I say it I don't know I admired his his dedication to what he felt was his purpose and like his his serenity within a world that was cruel and vindictive and he wasn't perfect like he did he did terrible things, you know, and like he had his own philosophies 
to justify them, but it didn't justify cruelty. And when he did make those mistakes, he spent, like, not necessarily mistakes. I think the guys who murdered his wife and deserved whatever he did to them. But it hurt him also. So he spent the rest of his life trying to atone for that. And I just... I admire redemption arcs like that. I really, really do. Where, like, you spend... You don't just, like... You don't fall into it. You don't wallow in your depravity. You don't, you know... You try to live your life with as few regrets as possible and stick to, like, your your faith or your principles or what or any combination thereof. And you come out of that as best a version of yourself as you can be, you know? And it was that that really that I really admired and I don't know, I think I got a little sidetracked in there, <laughs> but I was just soliloquizing on all the things and I think I kind of lost track for what my original point was, but I think also it was the kindness that was still, that was still, despite everything he'd done, despite the life he'd lived, the fact that he was somebody who could, you know, kill someone with almost out of, without a second thought, without, you know, just like within the space of a breath, also had the capacity for such kindness, and that the loneliness that was in him that was the same as in in some ways not the same exactly but like that called to a similar way at least in my mind to shepherd people who are set apart you know essentially from their skills or what they'd done in their lives you know that not many people could understand but that they these two could come together and find a solace and serenity in each other you know and i just he wasn't like bombastic or any, and it just, you could be near, he seemed like the kind of guy you could be near and just be calm. Like feel a sense of everything's gonna be okay even if everything's falling around, falling apart around you. And now, story-wise, that is gone for Shepard. He is gone. And I feel like despite the game doing a really good job of kind of showing us how she's having a hard time, it's not gonna get any easier, it's gonna get markedly worse. And despite everything, she still has to keep walking forward. Oh, there's just, there's stuff that goes on like towards the end of the game and stuff where you just like, Shepard just needs a break, you know? But she doesn't get that yet. And just hearing her say, like, the, knowing now that the prayer was for Shepard, you know, he'd said his prayer for himself. That was, that his last thought was of her. In that, you know, she's beset by wickedness and contention. But guide her so that we may see each other again. Sort of a thing, you know, was just, and that Shepard like participated in it and she said, I have a beautiful art, I, I, maybe I'm saying it's beautiful, but I made it myself, but I made a really beautiful art piece once, like an Art Nouveau style piece um, that has that phrase on it, There's other phrases on it too, a little bit on the border, I made a border with some of the key phrases, at least to me, in Mass Effect 3, and, and that is one of them. And at the end, her thoughts will be of him too. So, well, Shepard doesn't have time to sit around and grieve. The Primarch didn't have time to sit around and grieve. That's not what we do. We help our patients, all of them. That's a nice sentiment, but it won't help when we run out of supplies. I've seen this happen in combat before. We're constantly and needed. We will run out of supplies. 
Have you seen the projections the administration center made? I have. The situation is going to get worse. What's your point? We can't deny the facts. If we prioritize them, some of our patients are in a much better position to survive. If we take care of them first and ration our supplies, we can save some now and enable ourselves to save more later. We cannot do that. We swore an oath to help the sick regardless of their economic situations or their places in society. Who are we to choose who lives or dies? That's not what we do. Imagine, like, right, like, Shepard walks out of that, barely has time to grieve, and the world just contention and strife constantly beating at her. She's constantly needed. And this is where, I don't know, I think I've already said it, but this is where I really feel like it just starts wearing on her. And unlike most people, um, I do not romance anybody else after this. Um, Thane. Thane was the one for my shepherd. As much as Caden may want to get back together again and we, I can't wait to metaphorically drop kick him in the teeth. But no, there's nobody to give comfort to Shepard in these in these really incredibly terrible times, except Garrus Vicarian, who is the truest of true friends. And who without I said it before, but I truly mean it. Like it's looking at this and going forward, like she would not have gotten through this without him. Blood brother is like, you know, that's the only way I can, like, a, well, like a blood brother, and then there's, like, heart sister or something, where it's, like, you may not be related by blood, but the, the blood, sh like, shared, like, what is it, shed by both of us. Like, we've been through so much that... We help anyway. our patients, all of them. That's a nice... Everyone makes sacrifices in wartime. You'll make yours sooner or later. I'm sure I will. But I'll do it without betraying my oath or my patients. It's not that simple. If we aren't careful about this now, we'll end up losing everyone. Then we'll find a way. Look, we have more fortunate patients, right? Yes. And I hate to say it, but the fortunate ones have far better survival odds. And more credits. So we ask them for donations. To get more supplies. For those without credits. What? Are you <laughs> saying what I think you're saying? Extortion! That's... You know, that, that actually might work. I recognize her voice, but I can't remember what it's from. Anyway, I think last time I supported him, but realistically, she's the one, you know, you have to ration the supplies a bit in order to have some for later, but... Did... So painful. Still now. <laughs> he's just right there, but he's gone, you know? And like I realize I'm saying this for like myself, but like I've also like definitely like this is and this is how I think my shepherd would feel about it, you know. But she can't she can't stand here and mourn. I understand Taliban is very busy, but this is one of your own generals. He was stabbed with a poison blade by a Cerberus soldier during the attack on the Citadel. We can't identify the toxin. We're barely keeping him alive right now. It's some form of neurotoxin. If you could look at our charts... Of course, I understand. Even a general is just one man. Good luck. It's just, it's just constant. It's just constant. And this really did, I think at one point, I know for a fact, I did have to take a break at some point because I was just, I was very overwhelmed with everything going all at once. There's got to be something. I don't know what Cerberus was packing, but we're going to lose this patient. Without a new treatment plan, we're stuck, and I can't think of anything beyond what we've already tried. I know, but I can't think of anything else. Can you? His voice sounds very different from Luce Solarian's. But it's just this constant barrage of people needing your help, even if they don't come out, like, straight up and say it. farm and into the hills. I pulled the farm girl after me. All I wanted to do was live through the night. Nobody else could have done more. Mm. But morning came, no shuttle. 
Afternoon and then night, hiding from husks and those turing things. The file says the evacuation team thought your position was overrun. So after two days, I still don't have a gun, because those Turian things, you can't use theirs. I realize that shuttle isn't coming, not unless I get back to the farm and my radio. And the farm girl? She was with me. Even killed a few husks. <laughs> with a stick. Picked up a few other quests in here that I didn't really see. Code fragments. Rings of a loon. So much, so much, so much to do, and there's just never enough time. Girl, I'm trying to I'm trying to think elevator menu one moment please there's so much to do here on the citadel now arriving at presidium Commons. Oh. well and the fact that it was freaking After all, after being like attacked by Cerberus, they're like, now all of a sudden we have jellyfish in stock. Crazy. It's my money and I'm closing my account. Your account helps fund Citadel defense. If you shut it down and hide the money under your bed, it hurts the war effort. And if Cerberus attacks again and takes the Citadel, my money is gone. I'll take my chances on my own. Thank you. So you're fleeing the Citadel? Running to Sanctuary? If you trust the Council, you'll stay here. Why should I trust them? They couldn't stop Cerberus. What could they possibly do about the Reapers? <sighs> Nothing if you take your money and hide. Have you seen Palavin? Or Earth? You can't escape this war. At least here you've got the Council fighting for you. <sighs> but to fight, they need money. Money this bank has loaned them using accounts like yours. Okay. Okay, damn it. Leave the account open. Besides, how can some place like Sanctuary promise more safety than the Citadel? You're right. Guess all we could do is hope for the I best. mean, it's true. Like, what do you what do you expect them to be able to do? Like any other like private organization to do that the government isn't in this situation, you know? Terminal. Oh, I could like, I could like, work him or something. No, the Krogan are the only race that can fight on the toxic world, so they need support. Well, ideally, something like a cactus. Huh? They're good in mountains, immune to toxins, ferociously loyal to their riders. Yes, they'd be ideal. Unfortunately, they were driven to extinction during the Rachni War. Oh yeah. So unless we can engineer something new, Krogan on toxic worlds will have to fight on foot without support. No, um. I think the Cacliosaur is um, what we saw in the pictures, on the artifacts in the Krogan city. I could be wrong, a Cacliosaur could be an actual, uh, an actual, what do you call it, dinosaur or something, <laughs> but I don't think they were immune to toxins, <laughs> and they weren't necessarily <laughs> loyal to their writers, <laughs> because they were extinct. 
our turret. How many this time? Clear the area until you've done a full sweep. Oh to yeah. Tech and shut it off there you go. These are control schematics for Cerberus turrets. Will these help? Damn right they will. I'll have you crimes dig into them. Might even help us find the oh, little present Cerberus left. If we had listened. Thanks a lot. This is gonna save. If lives. we had sat and listened, I think he does say like they try to go disable some stuff. I don't understand. Why you're suddenly so confused. And they get to trap. Look, the assholes in touch. They blow up. Killing him won't bring anyone back. It's about justice. The man is a traitor and a murderer. You saw what he did to your wife. To my husband. And didn't bat an eyelash. He's evil, there's no doubt. Eh? What's going on here? I'm in position at CSEC. Draw them away, and I'll move in and make the kill. Don't answer that. What? Oh. I think there's like some justice stuff going down. I don't know. Same as always. Without that, everything goes to hell. Look at Palavin, my friend. We're in hell. We should be looking for terrorists. The rest can take care of itself. So the bar fights, the drunken disorderlies down by that purgatory place? How does cracking down on that crap help us win the war? People need to blow off steam right now. And how does letting the misdemeanors go help the war? Less tax spent on the light stuff means the Citadel has more money for defense. Everyone on the Citadel knows we're at war now. You have to show them that CSEC is still in control. They need that security. The commander's right. We need people coming into work every day. We need things to keep running. Otherwise, today's bar fight could be tomorrow's street riot. Yeah, maybe you're right. This feels so damn petty right now. It's true, it feels like that, but I, I, do, I, I do agree with... Honestly, with the statement of like trying to keep things running as best as possible, and that like your everyday person needs to feel safe going down the street from like random brawls and riots, you know, just as much as from terrorists. Commander Shepard, guess I know what happened to my backup. Excuse me? Come on, I'm in C sec in civilian gear with a weapon. I know when I'm made. Just let me explain. I actually don't know. Captain Aaron Summers, Alliance Marines, retired. Captain Summers? There's a prisoner here. CSEC officer who helped Cerberus. CSEC caught him when you stopped the coup. Now he's offering them intel on Cerberus to get a better deal. Why are you telling me mm. this? Because he doesn't deserve a better deal. He killed people during the coup, good people. And he's former Alliance, like us. The way I figure it, he's our problem to fix. Tell me what this guy did to deserve death. He executed his own friends in cold blood for Cerberus. Cleared the path for their troops. Now he's saying he's a vet. And he was suckered in by talk of helping humanity. I don't know what intel he has, and I don't really care either. He dishonored the uniform. If you gun that man down, you're dishonoring the uniform just as much as he did. Like hell I am. I don't like plea bargains any more than you do. But the intel we get will save lives. Says who? Our superiors. The people we swore to serve and trust. Captain Summers. Yes, Commander. Sorry, Commander. I'll shut it down. Thanks. I think I'm technically lower ranked. I'm a captain. Uh, I don't like it either. Like I really like. I think I think they should be like, yeah, you'll get a plea bargain, and then take him out back and uh, feed him the dogs. But um, it is what it is. So what happened to the Nazis too? Some of the Nazi scientists, if they told their intel, they uh, they got to come over and live in America, happy little lives. So I don't think they should have had that happen to them either. But at least in this situation, it seems like lives would be saved with the intel gotten, you know? But, let's see. Commander Shepard, do you have a oh. minute? So many people need my attention. Can I help you? Jordan Knowles, E-Crimes. Oh. It's an honor to meet I you, I just Commander. heard that name earlier, E-Crimes. I've got a saboteur hacking key systems, power, communications, it's bad. If you've got time to help, check out this console. Also, my Spectre thing popped got up it. earlier. Looks like a collection of access codes. They're Batarian diplomatic codes from back oh, when they had an embassy on the Citadel. This one. If you can use your Spectre access to find them, I can shut them down. 
I can access restricted intel at the Spectre office in the Embassy. If I find anything, I'll let you know. We had the Spectre thing pop up earlier with the... I think it was the guy, the terrorist that's apparently in intensive care, which it's the doctor's job, regardless of whoever it is, to try to keep them alive. You know, I don't blame them for that at all. If they start thinking they're the ones who can decide who lives and dies, like, you're in trouble, you know? Um, but, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot now. We're not, we're gonna, it's gonna take a while to run through the Citadel and get everything that everybody's trying to yell at me. And then we gotta talk to our friends, which I cannot, I can't remember if they say much about thing. Some people have had complaints about the Thane romance, um, that it wasn't given as much, um, merit, it wasn't given as much attention as, um, as others were, which to be fair, Thane was slated, you know, to not make it in this one. Um, and there is something that happens later that helps that helps, honestly, um, in the game, in the deal, in one of the, in the DLC, the Citadel DLC, which is like just all kinds of really fun and interesting extra new things, um, and things that help bring closure to certain things. So, um, like I said, I'm not upset that Thane, that you couldn't save Thane. I think, again, that dealing with loss, with, with un changeable loss is something that makes this game and this route, this particular path, very bittersweet, very poignant. Again, it's why I didn't necessarily go, I'm gonna let Eve survive on this one, you know? Um, and I kept it, my, kept it how I originally did play it because, I don't know, like, tragedy does make Tragedy can make things more meaningful in some ways, as long as you're not, like, bashed over the head with it. Or as long as it's not used, like, flippantly, you know? Where, like, I don't know, to bring up, kind of, I guess, to bring up, like, Harry Potter. I remember reading the seventh book years and years ago and being, like, I don't know, I just felt like she wielded the death hammer fairly indiscriminately. And it was, like, I don't, it didn't really feel, like, like, I felt like she was trying to create this, like, this depth, you know, this, like, deep bitter, bitter, not bittersweet even, but like, you know, tragedy to like really like make it into like literature or something, but it felt more tryhardy than anything else. And it just felt, it felt kind of flat. Like it was just like, oh, what? Like they died? Like what? You know, like, I don't know. It was just, it just for me, I don't know. I don't know about anybody else personally, but um, in this one, it was, I feel like oh, the, the deaths that happen you're much more connected to them and you're much, it's much more heartfelt and sorrowful and like I don't know to have this game was one of the first games that ever pulled that out of me too I think it was the first game that ever pulled that sort of reaction out of me honestly um it's just like, like a like a book would or like a movie would you know where you're like so attached to these characters to these people wh whether or not you see like reflections of yourself or others in them or if you just they're just so well written you connect with them as individuals you know that a death can be as meaningful as like a happy ending you know you know like, I don't know maybe it's just that's very like morose or whatever but like again I have seen mods that let things survive and I think he just like sends you notes or whatever um and it's not really like voiced or anything but it's or they like use some of the assets that were in the game for that option but again especially for the way I kind of roleplay my shepherd in, in my head, like, these losses are just one after the other after the other, and she is having to deal with them while also trying to save the galaxy. And it takes its toll on her, and you get to see that as it goes along, at least I do. I get to see it in my head as it goes along, and it creates a more tragic character in a way. And I, again, I'm not super good at, like, explaining things, I think. I think I'm far too verbose without actually being... I'm not succinct. <laughs> I don't have very good words that I like, just, like, explain things in a quick manner, but, um... or deeply enough, but... I hope you understand what I'm kind of trying to say on that, that, like... It's a bittersweet thing to have to deal with these things, but, like, in real life, you wouldn't be able to reload. You know, you wouldn't be able to go back and say, no, 
want to make it better because again it feels like and this is why in dragon age 2 slight spoilers in act 2 there is an event that you cannot undo another death that you cannot undo because it's so horrific that everybody who was in qa testing would reload every single person reloaded because they didn't if they messed up if they messed up in something because there used to be an option to be able to save this person um and they took it out they took out that option to save them because nobody would play nobody played that route you know and so in a way like as much as you're like why would you do this to me like why would you hurt me this way it's like that much more of a gut punch that much more meaningful not like a, i'm gonna make everything topsy-turvy you know i'm gonna save everyone sometimes there are tragedies you cannot avoid and learning to deal with that as a character in a game you know is, is an interesting experience anyway I need to stop. <laughs> so, um, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope it's not too awkward. I remember being very embarrassed by my first video, and I actually ended up putting in, like, I think in the comments somewhere, like, skip to this part if you don't want to hear me crying for three minutes straight. But to me, it was a very emotional moment that I wanted to share. Like, that was why I was doing this. That's why I'm still doing this, is me sharing myself I guess in a way with you guys and then the thing is too is that people then shared with me their experiences so it was like a reciprocity thing you know where like grief is sometimes avoided or, or put aside or cut out of a video you know or like they just or like you know people just don't react and it's like okay why aren't you like reacting at all you know it's kind of weird you know um but so, I don't know, it was a moment, like, grief does that, right? Sometimes we're, like, not always. Sometimes people just want to be left alone, but sometimes it can create, like, a camaraderie. People reach out and try to help each other, you know? Or share stories or experiences to try to make the load a little lighter, you know? Um, so I valued that a lot, despite me still being a little embarrassed about how much I cried. <laughs> but, um, yes, thank you again so much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, really quick, I want to say thank you to all my patrons. Uh, to all my patrons, but to especially Riscalito, my sapling tier patron, thank you so much for your support, and an extra special shout out to Adam, my tree tier patron, thank you so, so much for your support, my friend, I very much appreciate it, and an extra super awesome shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who is just really supportive, and really wonderful, and I really, really appreciate you very, very much, so thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.